Today, we're diving into something I'm really pumped about, the brand new Terramaster F8 Plus All SSD NAS. This little bit is compact but packs a serious punch, and whether you're at home with a growing media library or running a small business that needs a solid storage solution, the F8 Plus might be exactly what you need. But hey, there are some reasons why you might want to think twice before getting this device, and so without taking much of your time, Yo guys, let's get started. First off, this is seriously compact packaging for a NAS, and the device within it is barely bigger than an average adult hand. But first off, let's crack the box open. On opening the box, you get the F8 Plus unit itself, a power cable and an adapter, which by the way is 72 watts max, which is pretty efficient if you ask me. There's also an ethernet cable, oh and that's CAT6. We've also got some heat sinks for the NVMe drives, a few screws, a screwdriver, I always appreciate when they include that. And of course, the user manual and warranty info. The build quality feels rock solid for this device and I'm really digging this sleek black design. It's got a power button on the top, some ventilation for airflow and two fans at the bottom to keep this thing cool. Terramaster clearly put some thought into this design here. Now let's talk about what makes this NAS special. At the heart of the F8 Plus, we've got an Intel Core i3 N305 processor. We're talking about 8 cores and 8 threads, and this can boost up to 3.8 GHz, and that's some serious horsepower for a NAS of this size. This unit comes with 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM, which you can expand up to 32 gigs if you're feeling extra spicy. And let's not forget the star of the show, the 8 bay M.2 NVMe SSD slots. Yes, that's eight here. And that means you can potentially cram up to 64 terabytes of blazing fast storage in this thing, eight terabytes in eight places. On the connectivity front here, we get a 10 gigabit ethernet port, which is going to be crucial for taking advantage of those NVMe drives and speeds on this guy. There's also a HDMI port and three USB ports, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, two of them, and also one 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port at the top here. All of this runs on TOS 6, which is Terramaster's latest operating system. We'll dive into that in a bit. Now you might be thinking, that's a lot of fancy hardware, but is it a pain to set up? Well, setting up the F8 Plus is surprisingly straightforward. Let me walk you through the setup process. First things first, we need to install our NVMe drives. And to open this boy, it's pretty much easy. Unscrew this screw at the back here, and you can slide the components out as shown. As far as installing the storage sticks, it's basically a plug and play situation. Just slide them in, secure them with your screws and you're good to go. By the way, do not forget to include the heat sinks provided. There are also bands to keep them strapped to the M.2 drives while installing them. Once that's done, well, power it on and connect to your network. Now here's where Terramaster makes life easy. They've got the software called TNAS PC that will help you find a NAS on your network in no time. And you can also follow the setup guide in the user manual to get started. Now let's head over to the computer to see how I set this up. I'm recording my screen to show you, like guide you on how to set up this NAS. So the first thing you gotta do is go to tnas.local. That's the address, tnas.local to be able to access the NAS and set it up. And um, yeah, click on the start button and wait for the whole initialization to begin with the NAS. You actually don't have to wait for it. You can click on the begin now button and um, you have the bootloader and all that's been initialized on the SSD NAS while we wait. So it takes us to the start page. Yeah, this compatibility begin initialization, what happened? Um, online download recommended. So if you're having issues with um, this whole thing failing, it's probably your internet connection. So you can manually download these files and um, yeah, using this link and manually upload them. Next. So it takes less than a minute to get everything installed. That's the operating system. And I guess um, the hardware has been restarted now. So we, we just have to basically wait for it. The URL has been loaded and um, it took me to TNAS, the local port 8081 with the TOS. Um, initialization page. So the first thing you have to do here is create a storage pool. Let's confirm and go create that. And um, volumes, let's create. Create a volume on an existing on an existing storage pool and create a new one. Yeah, new. With all the drives, one terabyte, four of them from um, Western Digital. Um, T-Rate is proprietary to um, Terramaster. I need something that's more conventional. I think read five, should I do five? With five, so one just acts as the redundant drive. Let me see. Free space, redundant, one terabyte, so three terabyte. 
yeah all this code all data on the disk will be raised are you sure you want to continue yeah, go ahead with that mm -hmm. um let me name this flash storage um three terabytes mm, yeah max it out next next i think i might do btrfs so for the fact that i'm having raid configuration here i'm doing btrfs so let's go with that um seems about right confirm create the volume for some reason the volume creation got stuck and i had to install the um, pc client or the mac client so i could have access to the ip address of this um, terra master device and at the end of the day i'm here at the ip address and i created using the same pattern or the same steps to create the um the volume it's still being synchronized but yeah Created. I should be able to share it somehow. Shared folder, public. Let's see what that is. Um, let me see what I can do here. So I'm going to give it an SMB permission. Allow uh, 163 slash public. Got it. And all I've got to do is attempting to connect to. Yeah, connect. Then no, that was in the username I used. I used Oscar. The password, something like this. This is like the start menu, so you can see who is logged in and easily search for things here, just like your start menu on your PC. This is your file manager, so you can access. No, I don't install this. Don't prompt me for that for now. Um, you can access um, your files, your volumes, your shares, and all that, your favorite um, places. And this is the button to get your applications, all the apps that are currently installed, and you can easily search for whatever you want to search for. This is basically where you can start running your backups. And um, this icon is for your settings, the control panel. So you can see everything you need to set your disk, check the health, um, do your shared folders, terminal, access to these, the volume, storage, and all that. This is like your app center or your app store or your play store where you download apps on your NAS. So let's search for Plex, which is something you use to um, stream videos. I use Plex all the time. So since we've gotten access to the F8 um, SSD NAS, we have access through SMB. We're going to run speed test to see and compare with our true NAS server here, which is also on 10 gigabit um, connection. So let's let's run this first off. I'm going to use um, Blackmagic disk speed test. Blackmagic, I think that's, yeah, um, disk speed test. So first off, let's run a five gigabyte file on a regular true NAS um, configuration a custom built pc custom built server here so start the speed test so we're basically getting about 800 megabytes read right actually oh drop down to around 500 so so we're getting about a gigabyte of read speed about 600 ish um write speed 800 down to 600 so 600 to 800 roughly 700 um write speed one gigabyte read speed and um, we're going to try for the F8 NAS and see. But first off, let's take this um, screenshot for this. Then let's go over to um, the same 5 gigabytes file and select the... This should work. Let's see this file open and run that speed test. So we're getting about the same. Oh, this seems a little faster. Our read speed is actually 800 megabytes per second, close to one gigs, and the write speed, uh, that is slower than what we got from the TrueNAS. So, but this actually evens out. We're getting 800, 850 megabits per second, megabytes per second rather, which is faster than what we get from my TrueNAS. So I'll try to copy something, maybe let's say a 30 gig file over to this and see how fast it takes to copy. That's to write into it and also copy it out and we'd also do that for our regular true NAS configuration. This is going to be a write operation. So I'm going to copy it into the Terra Master and time it with my smartphone. So about 18.92 seconds. So I'm about to drag it here and um, let's see, start. That's about 34.59 seconds, almost double the time when compared to um, the Terra Master. So let's do a read operation and see the difference. So I'm about to copy from Terra Master to my desktop and that's gonna be 
go. Wow, that was faster. Read operation is about 12.86 seconds. So let's try with my true NAS configuration. I'm going to delete this file and now. This is 11 seconds, so this seems faster for read speed. Setup is a matter of opening up the web interface and following the initial setup wizard, and you should be good to go. All right, now for the part you've all been waiting for. I set up a RAID configuration using RAID 5 since those are standard instead of the Teramaster T RAID technology. After my test, I wasn't as impressed as I thought I would. I expected it to fully saturate the 10 GBE speeds, but we weren't there for some reasons I'll explain later. Now a quick heads up, to get the full benefit of 10 GBE speeds, you need a compatible network setup, meaning your switches or your network configuration and also your PC or Mac should support 10 GBE. Otherwise, you'd be limited by the network speeds on your local network or devices. I also did notice that on idle, you should see around 14 watts power consumption and between 35 to 40 watts when running on full load with my four sticks configuration here. One thing I found interesting is the ability to run video streams using Plex. And that's because the processor on here has its own GPU on chip. So Plex is quite easy with this NAS. For the tech savvy users, there's Docker support and even virtual machine hosting. It's like having a mini data center right in your home or office. One feature I particularly am impressed about would be the photo management app with these guys. It's got AI powered facial recognition, which makes organizing your photos a breeze. It's not quite at the level of some dedicated photo services, but it's pretty damn good for a NAS. And if you need more functionality, the App Center lets you expand even further. It's like the App Store on your iPhone or the Play Store on your Google Android device. Now let's break down the pros and cons of the F8 Plus before I talk about the limitations. On the plus side, you've got this incredibly compact design that packs a serious punch. The hardware is top-notch with those NVMe drives and 10 GBE networking providing speeds that will make your head spin, actually. Now, the RAID options here are flexible and despite all the power, it runs quieter than my refrigerator. It's really quiet. Now, on the flip side, all this awesomeness comes at a premium price point, about $800. Now, it's definitely an investment. Some of the more advanced features might be a bit overwhelming if you're not tech savvy. And while 8 drive bays are plenty for most users, if you're looking to build a massive media server, you might find yourself wanting more. It's not something that will be enough for, say, our studio here, but for home users, this is perfect. Now, the limitations. My drives are really underutilized here. These drives are supposed to reach speeds of up to five gigabytes per second, not gigabits. And so with four of them here in RAID 5 configuration, I was expecting something around 15 gigabytes read speed. And that's over 100 gigabits per second on PCIe Gen 4 by four. Of course, I'm aware this is 10 gigabits and we can't get up to those speeds here. However, the hardware here only supports PCIe Gen 3 by one per slot, which is definitely creating a bottleneck for my drives. Now the processor here is a nine PCIe lane processor with eight allocated to the drives and one I assume should be for the ethernet port on this device. We're using a 10 gigabit adapter. We should theoretically max out at 1.2 gigabytes per second, but in reality, we're capped at around 900 megabytes per second or just over five gigabits per second. Now, this is due to the limitations on the PCIe lanes. I was expecting to fully saturate 10 GBE connection, especially with RAID 5 in place, but in theory, I should be hitting a limit of 10 gigabits here, but that's not happening with my configuration. And that's clearly a bottleneck at play here. So if you're thinking about getting SSDs for a similar setup, don't waste your money on those super fast, expensive models like I did. The NAS won't fully utilize the speed and it's not just worth it's not worth it for you. For example, a one terabyte drive of this kind will cost you around $90 or $75 on discount. But you could get something like the SN580 or Crucial P3, which is slightly faster than what this NAS can handle and still end up at the same speed with my configuration and expensive M.2 drives. Plus you save around $20 per drive and imagine what can be saved when you buy let's say eight SSDs or even higher storage configurations. It's worth considering. After spending some quality time with the Terramaster F8 Plus, it's clear that this NAS is a mixed bag of impressive features and some unexpected limitations. Its compact design, powerful processor, and potential for high speed storage makes this an attractive option for many users. However, the performance bottlenecks we've encountered with this guy, particularly with the PCIe lanes, might give pause to those seeking absolute top tier speeds. Ultimately, the F8 Plus is a solid choice for users who need a compact, 
quite an feature rich NAS with um, room for expansion. Also, you might want to consider the regular F8, not the plus variant, because I think it'd get about the same speed. Just remember to choose SSDs wisely. You don't have to break the bank on the fastest drives out there. If you loved this video, do not forget to like, subscribe, and also share with your friends. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and YouTube thinks you loved this video here. Until next time, keep your data safe and your speeds high. Kuidati.